When talking about forces that shape planet Earth, we normally discuss things like earthquakes, volcanoes, asteroid impacts, or even much slower processes such as plate tectonics, but we rarely look at things that happened outside of planet Earth, especially thousands of light years away. But what if some of the biggest drivers of geology on planet Earth did not come from within, but were actually the result of the shape of our galaxy and certain structures in the Milky Way that possibly influenced Earth for millions and millions of years? And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. In today's video we're going to be discussing relatively new research on something that has been speculated before, the research by Kirkland and Sutton that as always you can find in the description, that in essence presents some of the first direct physical evidence that possibly suggests that Earth's geological history is directly tied to the movement of the solar system through the galaxy itself. But all of this discovered in something really really tiny on our planet. Ancient zircon crystals discovered in various sediments that potentially contains evidence for this cosmic connection. And so in this video we're going to discuss exactly what the study is about, we're going to look at some of the evidence presented here, and look at how these tiny geological time capsules record galactic events, while also exploring this exciting hypothesis that spiral arms in our galaxy may occasionally result in catastrophic events right here on planet Earth. But first, let's briefly discuss the Milky Way, and specifically its arms. So first of all, when it comes to the location of the solar system in the Milky Way, you can sort of see it here. We're located deep inside the disk, and specifically near the inner edge of what's called the Orion Arm. But it's also important to understand that these galactic arms are not fixed structures. They're often described by scientists as density waves, with individual stars moving in and moving out at all times, but in essence causing a kind of a jam inside the arm, with the matter propagating inside at different speeds. And so you can kind of see it visualized right here. And so the stars, including our Sun, generally orbit the galactic center, with most stars in this case orbiting at approximately 240 km per second, but the density wave structure, the spiral arm itself, seems to move a little bit slower at about 210 km per second. And so since the Sun is traveling faster than the arms, sometimes we overtake them and pass right through them, especially through some of these denser regions in the galaxy. And normally the time it takes for the solar system to complete one full orbit around the galaxy, which we refer to as the galactic year, is approximately 225 million years. But the time between solar system's transits between each of the major spiral arms is a little bit shorter, 187 million years. And so when we pass through these arms, the solar system starts flying through a lot of higher density stuff, especially things like gas and dust. And this gas inside the arms can be easily tracked today by for example observing neutral hydrogen emissions, which is known to emit what's known as the hydrogen line or 21 centimeter line. So very specific radio waves that seem to be more intense coming from the galactic arms. And this of course allows astronomers to map the spiral structure in the galaxy, even when certain regions are enriched in gas and are difficult to observe using optical telescopes. And so this hydrogen density usually serves as a kind of a proxy for the entire architecture inside the galaxy. But what about these zircon crystals? Well here this basically starts with a somewhat simple question. How can we get a terrestrial record of this ancient cosmic journey in order to see if anything affected Earth around this time? And well the answer is here. Zircon is an incredibly hardy mineral that we basically find in most of the Earth's crust. And it can generally survive for billions of years, making it a kind of a perfect deep time archive. It's basically a time capsule that shows us what happened around certain times. And that's because when zircon crystals form inside magma, they also trap a lot of chemical information from the moment of their formation. And some of the key information in this case is oxygen isotopes. And that's because oxygen atoms come in slightly different forms, they obviously have different masses. And so here we can use these isotopes as tracers that can then tell scientists whether the magma that formed these crystals came from deep inside the planet, or if it had any interaction with the surface derived water, like for example during hydrological cycle. But for this particular study, the specific measurement that was used is referred to as zircon oxygen isotope kurtosis, with the word kurtosis usually referring to a kind of a statistical measurement, also referred to as tailedness, which describes the extent to which tails are heavy or light compared to normal distribution. Here is a rough representation of what this looks like. And so here by using the shape and variability of data distribution over time, researchers proposed a hypothesis. 
In this case, a greater kurtosis would mean that magmatic processes were more variable. Reflecting the depth of crustal melting and the degree of interaction with surface water. Or I guess just to rephrase this, this would allow scientists to recreate various environmental conditions during certain times millions of years ago, especially during certain galactic transits. And so here this involved a comparison of two enormous datasets that included highly variable terrestrial zircon oxygen isotopes and variations of hydrogen density along the orbit of the solar system. And in the end they map both of these datasets, producing a common time series, with the time series extending back 4 billion years. And the main point was of course to find any kind of a correlation between geological anomalies and periods when we knew solar system was very likely passing through some kind of a galactic arm. And to their surprise there seemed to be a significant correlation. Specifically periods when the solar system passed through some of these denser hydrogen enriched areas, there seemed to be a direct lineup with spikes in zircon oxygen variability, with a lot of these density peaks corresponding to known features inside the Milky Way galaxy, such as for example the Scudrum Centaurus and Perseus spiral arms. Or just to rephrase this again, there was a direct correlation between spiral arm passage and zircon variability, suggesting that the conditions on the surface and the environment was much different to what was expected. And this alignment between Earth's geological variance and the astrophysical measurements is really unexpected. It kind of suggests that the Earth's crust was somehow more chaotic during a lot of these galactic encounters, basically resulting in zircon that was very different from your typical zircon produced on the planet when there's nothing happening. And here this model was actually tested using multiple methods, including cross-correlation and roll and window correlation, with the results basically showing the same, suggesting that the changes in oxygen kurtosis and hydrogen density were happening simultaneously in time. Or once again suggesting that there is definitely something happening here, and the passage through these high density environments seems to affect geology on Earth. But the question is of course, how? What's the exact mechanism? How exactly can a spiral arm passage cause variable magmatic activity on the planet that ends up producing different crystals? Well right now the hypothesis connects galactic density to various impact rates. So basically here the theory is that when the solar system passes through some of these regions, there seems to be a dramatic increase in various gravitational forces, mostly the result of various stars being much closer to us, or possibly just the fact that there's just so much more gas. And this periodically destabilizes the Oort cloud that then sends all kinds of icy bodies toward our planet. And so when the Oort cloud is disturbed, there's just a much higher chance that some kind of a comet is going to strike the planet, resulting in a dramatically elevated impact flux on the planet. And it's these large impacts that potentially deliver enormous thermal energy, with this massive energy injection leading to higher variability in magmatic petrogenesis, or generation of rocks and crystals. And so the melting of the crust and the rock formation becomes a lot more chaotic and less stable. Which is precisely what the variable zircon oxygen isotope record shows us. And so this deep time geological record offers us a very important observation into the impact flux or the amount of impacts much farther back in time compared to what we actually see on the surface based on the measurement of craters. And that's because our planet is just not very good at maintaining craters, they usually disappear pretty quickly. And so by using the observations from these zircon crystals, it might become possible to create a much better record in order to assess the number of impacts our planet experienced and of course what effects this had. And if confirmed, this is a profound discovery. It essentially argues that we must seriously consider astrophysical drivers when it comes to planetary evolution. So it's not just about what happens in the solar system itself, it's also what happens when the solar system finds itself in certain locations. And so here Earth's geological story is not just based on internal activity, it's also influenced by the galaxy itself. With this particular research providing us with a very interesting model that attempts to directly test correspondence between galactic hydrogen and terrestrial geochemical records. Although right now the main focus is just on the galactic arms and the observations from the zircon crystals. But I'm sure in some of the future studies researchers might also tackle other galactic shapes and potentially discover other minerals that also have some kind of a record. But right now this connection is very interesting because it does suggest geological archives could help us chart regions of the Milky Way that are currently unobservable to us. So for example right now there's a region in the Milky Way that we just cannot see. It's actually hidden behind the center of the Milky Way known as the Central Molecular Zone. 
and this location is often referred to as the zone of avoidance. And so here the suggestion is that by using geological accounts from our own planet, we might be able to infer some of the shapes in this zone by essentially analyzing what happened to the planet when it was passing through this region over a hundred million years ago. And so based on some of the recent studies and based on some of the recent galactic maps, we know that at least 17% of the solar orbit is completely uncharted. And this upskirt section coincides with some of the expected location for the mysterious Norma arm. And so if this correlation holds, the observations from these zircon crystals would allow us to see when the solar system passed through some of these hydrogen density clouds, offering a geological insight into the area we just cannot see. But because all of this is based on correlation, we still have to be kind of careful. Correlation is not a causation. And so making strong statements about these galactic effects from Earth's internal processes is still something we have to be just a little bit careful about. Nevertheless, there's definitely quite a lot of emerging evidence that provides us with a somewhat compelling framework. Framework that suggests that, in theory, we can map the entire galaxy by just looking at the geological record of crystals on our own planet. Something that's been imprinted right here on Earth's crust for billions of years. But at the moment we don't really know how accurate this is yet, and additional studies need to confirm this because this is a pretty grandiose proposition. And so until future discoveries or until we learn something else, check out some of the previous videos about the Milky Way in the description below. And thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM it directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few secret videos. I'll turn away, you can also buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.